Hello, everyone. Welcome to Behind the Byline. I'm Sabine K. Bergman. And I'm Savani Babu. We are the co-founders of Hidden Compass, and we're speaking with author and freelance journalist Wes Morgan, who's joining us from Washington, D.C. He's been published in outlets uh, such as the Washington Post, the New York Times, the Atlantic. He's also the author and photographer behind our spring 2022 photo feature, which introduces us to Afghan soldiers of years past the extreme hardships they endured, and why their stories deserve our attention more than a decade after their portraits were taken. Thank you for joining us, Wes. Thanks so much for having me. I wanna start by asking a, a question that's a little bit more about your career, because we read that you first started embedding with combat units at the age of 19. That's and true. So tell us more about how and, and, and why that happened. Um, you know, when I started college, I, I was very, I was obsessed with the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. 9-11 uh, had happened when I was in eighth grade. Um, and I grew up as just kind of a, a military history nut. Um, and so a lot of things that had seemed like the past uh, suddenly seemed like the present and the future. Um, <clears throat> and so I, I kind of figured that the easiest way in was going to be, you know, the, the tried and tried and trodden path of, uh, of joining the military. So I started ROTC when I got to college. Um, but then I had a bizarre opportunity come up um, to actually go over the summer after my freshman year was my first trip um, to Iraq at what actually turns out to have been really the all time peak of, of, of violence in Iraq during the summer of 2007. And um, while I was there, I met, you know, real journalists um, who, who, who had made careers covering the war um, and just got hooked and decided that was what I wanted to do. Wow. Yeah, that's incredible. And uh, the images and the stories from this particular piece you wrote for and photographed for Hidden Compass go back to your time in Afghanistan. Um, some of them, those images are from more than a decade ago. Uh, I wanna talk about security um, and safety and the individuals in your story. We've had our discussions on the editorial end of this, but from your perspective, what are the safety considerations of telling this story for the individuals in your story? Well, I'm not gonna be using names. Um, so as far as the photos are concerned, I mean, we, we are looking at Afghan soldiers and policemen's faces. Um, I've consulted with um, friends and colleagues who are currently working in Afghanistan or have been there recently since the fall uh, of, the, of the Islamic Republic um, in, in last August. Um, and basically what I've been told is um, there, are, there are reprisals that are going on, um, but they're not sort of, they are not... Um, systematic reprisals, you know, being ordered by the Taliban uh, based on people's affiliations with the former government, uh, with the exception of um, probably, uh, you know, members of special operations units, uh, members of the intelligence units, intelligence services, uh, which are not people that I'm, I'm publishing photographs of. Um, so while there are reprisals, um, it's my understanding that they're much more, and this is consistent with a lot of the history of the war, um, they're, they're a lot more kind of locally based. I mean, people settling scores that, uh, that, that accumulated over the past 20, really 40 years of war. Yeah, it was, it was important to make sure that in telling a story like this, we weren't going to put anyone else in danger. Right. right. With the world focused elsewhere these days, why is it important to tell the stories of these particular individuals? Well, uh, I mean, I, I think that the war in Afghanistan, although it is appears to be over right now, uh, maybe this is sort of an intermission. I don't, I don't think we really know. Um, but even if it is really over, um, it, there there is a lot that remains untold about it. Um, and in particular, I think, uh, and I'm guilty of this myself too, um, Westerners have focused a lot on the Western experience in Afghanistan. We have often viewed it as uh, an American war or a NATO war, um, when in reality, uh, the United States and NATO were parties to a much larger and longer conflict uh, that was going on before we arrived um, and, and continued, uh, not for very long, but continued after we, after we finally departed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you raise such a good point that there are so many stories left to be told and also a lot of perspective that we can gain in the years uh, since uh, these, these stories first occurred. We at Hidden Compass do things a little bit differently than most other media outlets. We publish our stories with campaigns, uh, patronage campaigns that invite our audience to directly support the partnerships that we have with our journalists and storytellers Wes, what would it mean to you for people to contribute to your campaign? 
Um, you know, it's it's important to me uh, that people continue to think about the war in Afghanistan, think about not only what the United States did in Afghanistan, um, but about the civil war that uh, that we participated in, um, and in, in many ways, uh, exacerbated uh, in ways that were that were not obvious to us. Um, so anything that contributes to continuing to tell those stories, even though the spotlight has moved on, uh, I think is really worthwhile and important. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us for Behind the Byline, Wes. We appreciate your time. And for the people who are viewing this video, we hope you'll go check out the story and that you'll contribute to that patronage campaign. Thank you so much. Thank you.